ignition system is giving us a pretty good spark. This is running at about 6,000 RPM, which is more than the Wallaby will be running, I would guess. Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to my machine shop. Today we're going to be talking about ignition systems for our model engine. We're going to touch on the Kittering ignition system. We're going to touch on the CDI or capacitive discharge ignition system and the transistor controlled ignition system, TCI. All of these can be used on our model engines. The Wallaby has a magnet located in the flywheel and this passes over a hall sensor which creates a digital pulse which then triggers our ignition system. So this can be used with either a transistor controlled ignition system or a capacitive discharge ignition system. I've experimented with both. I have to say that the ignition system has been one of the most challenging problems for me on building the Wallaby. I have to admit that most of the problems I've had are of my own creation. At one point, for some reason, I decided I wanted to have a ignition system that had a microcontroller that was in the loop that would allow me to adjust the timing of the ignition system given the RPM of the ignition, advance the timing as the engine ran faster. Well, I designed and built that system only to have the microcontroller disrupted by the electromagnetic interference generated by the spark so that has proved to be a dead end for me. I may revisit that someday, but anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the three types of ignition system. Let's take a look at the points-based or Kittering ignition system first. The points-based ignition system is very simple. That's one of the beauties about it. It has made up of a battery, a, co a coil with a primary and secondary winding, and points that open and close typically by a cam located on the distributor, or it could be located on the camshaft. And we also have a capacitor that is often put across the points to prevent arcing and wearing of the points contacts. The way that a Kittering ignition system works is you have a set of points that is held open by a cam in the engine. Just before the spark is supposed to fire, the points close and a circuit is created that allows current to flow from the battery and through the primary side of our coil. And then at the moment we want to fire the spark plug, the points open. That magnetic field created in that coil by this primary winding collapses and that electrical energy cannot escape back out the primary side of the winding because the points are open. So we force that energy into the secondary side of the coil and through our spark plug, where we have a high voltage that creates the spark. So on a model engine, these points would need to be mounted somewhere, preferably in the, on the camshaft, and the cam then would open and close these points. The first internal combustion model engine that I built used a points-based ignition system it had a cam located on the camshaft, which would open and close the points. So the next ignition system I'd like to look at is the transistor controlled ignition system. And one version of this replaces the coil and the ignition system with a complete ignition system, almost. This is a coil over plug, and it includes the coil, it includes some electronics, and it mounts directly to the spark plug. It has four pins here, and it's very simple. It requires 12 volts and ground, and then a signal ground and a five volt trigger. So our hall sensor can be connected to that trigger signal and fire this coil over plug ignition system. These are small, and they work very well. The first Wallaby I built, the prototype, I used a coil over plug ignition system. So I recommend these. They're relatively inexpensive on Amazon. The next version of transistor controlled ignition system that I wanted to look at, and this is the one I'm gonna actually try to use on my Wallaby. It uses a transistor here 
and a standard coil. And it works just like the point system, kittering system, except it uses this transistor as a switch to control the current through the coil. I have a little circuit here that interfaces to a Hall sensor. And I also have a capacitor and a resistor in the circuit that control the pulse width to the transistor so I get a constant dwell or charge period for the coil independent of this engine's RPM. In some systems, if you directly use the Hall sensor to trigger the transistor, when it's slow, the that pulse width is larger, and as the engine speeds up, that dwell time is smaller, and you get less energy to the spark plug. So this is the one I'm going to try to get working on my Wallaby. We'll see what luck I have. So I built this board myself uh, with some schematics I found off the internet. Um, you can tell I'm not the world's best solderer, if that's a word. I'm not very good at soldering. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but we're going to see if we can get this one working. This is the ignition system that I built and I'm demonstrating here. It it's, was designed by Sage and Getty. This schematic here is dated 2015. The Hall sensor has three pins and is attached here. This front end interfaces the Hall sensor. This is a simple LED that flashes whenever the Hall sensor triggers, which is nice. This is the resistor capacitor circuit that provides the dwell timing. This is a drive transistor that then fires the larger switching transistor, that allows the current to flow through the primary side of the coil. This is designed for, say, a 6 volt to 12 volt battery. Typical Hall sensors will work anywhere from 5 volts to 24 volts. I'm using 12 volts. That seems to give me a really nice spark. Uh, but I also get a, a decent spark with 6 volts, which is just four AA batteries. I'm going to include this schematic plus about another five or six that I've collected off the internet in a zip file. I'll throw that up on my Patreon page for those interested in building their own ignition circuits. There's one last thing I'd like to touch on before we turn to the test setup I'm using, and that's the coils. I don't have a very wide range of coils here. This is something I'd like to experiment with more in the future. I'd like to find some small coils that we could hide away underneath the base in our model engines. This one here is nice. It is used with the CDI ignition system used for the motor scooter. This is a standard car coil used back in a 1960 vintage automobile with using a point system. Uh, this is the one I have been using with my, my Wallaby. I'd like to find a smaller one. This one here is interesting. It's a coil for a twin cylinder motorcycle, which is very much like the Wallaby. It has a, a primary coil and it has two secondary coils that will fire two spark plugs simultaneously. This would be work great in the Wallaby as a wasted spark ignition where you fire both cylinders at the same time, every revolution of the crankshaft. One of the spark plugs will ignite the cylinder on the power stroke, and the other one will be wasted as the cylinder is on the exhaust stroke. Now you notice I also have a ballast resistor here. Um, this coil here has a resistance of about three and a half ohms. But this coil here has a very low resistance of about an ohm and a half. So I need to use this ballast resistor to um, increase the resistance that the battery sees when we turn this on. Otherwise, we'll burn out our transistor. It can't handle the current required to drop across 1.5 uh, ohms. Let's take a look at my test setup. So here's our test setup all together. We've got our ignition system over here with the coil our ignition circuit, our battery, spark plug, spark plug wire. And then over here, we have a motor driving a simulation flywheel with a magnet embedded in it and our hall sensor here. So this is what I use to test out various circuits, coils, spark plug, spark plug gaps.
And here's the culmination of all of our hard work. A nice hot spark running at about 6,000 RPM. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, remember to like and subscribe. And remember, as I've mentioned before, find a zip file on my Patreon page that includes a lot of the schematics and circuits that I've scoured the internet for, including the one I'm using. So, until next time, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Take care.